view was uh, eliminate, or was John Backus's view on eliminating the von Neumann bottleneck. Okay, so, and you talked about in the, at the beginning of sort of this, this uh, phase, um, there was a lot of enthusiasm about computer architecture specifically and, and the merging of these concepts around functional programming and computer architecture. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how architecture has evolved and whether, you know, this, the, your experience with Haskell it makes you feel like we've moved further along this, uh, this line toward eliminating the, the bottleneck? Oh, so uh, when I, uh, I didn't say very much about this, but, but on the slide about uh, many architectures, I said mostly doomed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think what we discovered is that it's, it is, though it is uh, attractive to think about making computers specifically designed to do um, graph reduction, say, it's a, it's a bad mistake. <laughs> right. So uh, partly, there's no future in building hardware that interprets stuff that you could have just compiled in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right, anything you can do statically would be good. And our other problem was, of course, that uh, Intel was um, making processors faster so quickly that anything we built was, uh, looked slow, even if it was parallel, looked slow by the time uh, you know, the, a year or two had gone by. So things have actually changed a bit now. So firstly, I think we're now rid of the let's build a completely different architecture I idea. So I, I'm, I think that you know, we've got to start with a conventional von Neumann architecture, just use lots of parallel machines. So it's actually pretty conventional parallel architectures. But I still think, and I didn't say this in the talk, that probably the best hope for programming large-scale parallel machines is going, to be, uh, is going to involve the very careful control of effects. Whether that means a purely functional base with controlled effects like Haskell or more, more mainstream languages with carefully controlled effects, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that purity is the way of the future. And I think Lawrence Snyder had a sli slide that said um, something very like that. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Kim Bruce, Pomona College. Uh, I was surprised that you said that no one's ever written down a formal semantics, particularly given the composition of the committee and the purity of the language. <laughs> so I'm wondering, was there something hard about writing it, or did you just never get around to it? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, of course, Simon oversimplified, and um, there were formal semantics for various bits. So, for okay. instance, there was a formal semantics at the core of the original type classes paper, which then got elaborated into another paper, which was, here's how you do type classes less formally and much closer to what we do in Haskell, which was a great guide to what goes on. Simon talked about the core language, which mm -hmm. has an easy formal semantics, and so on. But um, no, Simon never got around to doing a formal snack for all the things he added into GHC. Why don't you say what? <laughs> Well, even for them, there's a formal semantics for quite a bit of that too. So there's uh -huh. a, um, there's a, in my um, paper about tackling the awkward squad, there's a fairly well-developed operational semantics for I.O. and foreign function mm -hmm. interface and exception handling. But, uh, but what, what's missing is, is something that puts all of these pieces together into some giant, humongous thing. And in fact, I'm not, uh, the reason I said I'm not so ashamed is because putting the, doing the, the, essentially the, uh, the proof engineering thing of putting it all together, it's not clear what the, the, the payoff for that is big enough to justify its price. Um, but, I, but Phil, you're absolutely right. It did, did oversimplify. There's lots of bits uh, formalized. So one place where formal semantics did play a role in the original design was in the semantics of pattern matching and equations. I remember we had many different uh, proposals for wh how, what pattern matching should mean, mm -hmm. uh, one of them involving parallel execution. And um, we had a discussion over whether or not the, that proposal would have a pleasing formal semantics. I got the job one night of going home and doing the homework of writing one. I came back the next day and I said, this is just uh, impossible. I can't see any way to give this a compositional semantics except by putting the syntax in the semantic values. And I remember people around the table say, oh, well, that's all right then. We've got a formal semantics. <laughs> <laughs> but I later got the homework of incorporating uh, Haskell's guards into that semantics. And it just became so incredibly complex that everybody decided it must be a bad idea. Thank goodness. Guy Steele, Sun Microsystems. Quick comment and a question. My comment is that Common Lisp and other Lisps have an abstraction feature called back quote. I've never seen it nested deeper than three. There may be. <laughs> <laughs> There may be some deep principle lurking here for a graduate student to look at. <laughs> the other thing is that the one time I went and 
to use Haskell to write a serious program, I, I was rudely shocked to discover I really couldn't just drop in print statements to debug. I had to take unit testing very seriously. Could you make just a couple of comments about debugging and performance profiling in, uh, in Haskell and issues like that? We've done a lot of debugging. <laughs> So, so Why for don't we our <laughs> testing expert to uh, <laughs> Okay, well, um, where testing is concerned, then purity is uh, immensely valuable. I'm, I'm sure we agree about that. So, I, I don't personally find testing and debugging Haskell programs particularly difficult. Um, where performance uh, is concerned, then one of the big performance problems with Haskell has been space use. It's been very hard to predict and uh, initially at least very hard to understand. But um, out of that came uh, Haskell's heap profiler, which I think gives very good um, empirical feedback about the space behavior of, of programs. And that work has enabled Haskell programmers to uh, understand the space behavior of their programs rather well, empirically. And it's also been copied in other programming languages. So I think that's perhaps another case where purity in the end led to a, a good solution. And also to many interesting research challenges in some ways. Oh, stop. Oh, all right. <laughs> yes. So I wouldn't have done that, except we are resuming in 17 minutes. Have a good, quick break.